Now we're finally at the final step where we start rendering out our object with its texture maps. And we're going to use Marmoset Toolbag, which is a really strong game engine renderer that we're going to be using to display the final result of our model. Now, typically, you can go up to File and Open Scene or Input or Import a Model. But Marmoset allows you to drag and drop your OBJs, FBXs, any file formats for models and textures right into the interface without going through the file menu. So it makes it really quick, really easy to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in my directory and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find my selecting my OBJ and dragging it into Marmoset. I'm going to minimize that and you can see right off the bat it puts this white shader on it it's the default material that comes with the OBJ uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object itself and then go to the default shader right click and say apply and now it's applied that shader now before we dive into it a little bit more there's definitely some problems I see with this particular model the biggest one is the pivot point for this model. So if I wanted to make this into a turntable animation, this is what's going to happen. So again, the reason why we have this huge offset is because we wanted the low and high poly to line up in the correct places in 3D space so it could bake out its maps. Now we don't need that anymore. So we need to move this object back to the origin or change the pivot point back onto the uh, object itself. And you can't do that really in Marmoset. Uh, you'd have to take it back into Maya. The other problem is also I'm starting to see some hard edges on our model, mostly around the UV shells. So that's going to give us some shading um, discrepancies uh, once we get our final model uh, approved. So we definitely need to fix that also. So a few things we need to go back into Maya and uh, take care of. So let's go do that. I'm going to bring up Maya and I'm going to drag this over to the side and then I'm going to bring back my directory and let's just drag that OBJ in the Maya and zoom up on it and let's change the pivot point on this guy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and go up to the top and then center pivot. There it is. I'm going to hold the D key real quick, grab the Y and drop it down to the center right there. I'm also going to rotate this guy just a bit so he's a little bit straighter. Okay. So also let's land this guy back to the origin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top and go to absolute transform and I'm going to input zeros for the X, Y, and Z. And that should move. Oh, sorry. I'm in rotate. Make sure I'm in the move tool. And I'm just going to put zero, zero, zero there it is now it's popped back over there and then it also got rid of a little bit of the rotation there so we'll just bring that back just a bit so let's just kind of do the adjustments we need there we go and then I'm going to zero everything out it's right here freeze transformations and then the other thing we need to do is get rid of these hard edges on the model. So select it and you can go to mesh display and soften edge. Or you can hold shift, right click, hold and say soften edge through the marking menus. There you go. And everything looks good. We did get a huge name on here so I'm just going to kind of come in here and kind of clean that up a little bit. Alright. 
and let's name this like final or something just in case we need that other model for something else that keeps the correct origins if we have to rebake maps or anything all right so file export selection obj normals turned on uh, make sure this is going to the correct directory there we are and pick that name and change it final export selection all right let's get back to marmoset i'm going to select that object and delete it bring back my menu and it should be in here here it is just drag and drop that final and if we click on it there's the pivot point and our seams along our UV shells look good so everything's looking everything's looking good even that default shader got put on now I'm gonna go over to this default mat right click and I'm gonna say delete it so we don't need it so I only need one shader to get this going uh, let's start dropping in our maps and starting to see how this is going to start looking. Uh, let's go back to our directory and I put my texture maps in this SP folder and I'm going to start dragging and dropping. So right here you'll see Albedo, that's going to be your color map. So just grab your color map and just drag it into the icon for the albedo and there it is you can see it just puts it and lines it up looks really good let's do the normal map so we're gonna go to surface and then I'll grab my normal map drop it right into that and then this one you do have to pay attention um, what direction those uh, UVs are pointing in, in the white direction uh, let's see so if I want to kind of change my lighting around a little bit I'm going to hold shift and right click and hold and drag around there we go and those highlights don't look right so I'm gonna go over to the flip Y and that looks a lot better so look that looks like those highlights were coming from the bottom should be coming from the top perfect and then now that's giving us a little bit better idea of what that's looking like it's looking really good now let's uh, drop in the roughness so roughness is going to be right here let's see we're going to go down to microsurface and drag that right into it there you go. Now you might have to change this to gloss to get that to go. But that should work right off the bat. But you know, honestly, it's not shiny enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the invert. And there we go. Just going to invert our map there. That's going to give us a nice little result. And then we can play with the gloss a little bit. If we think we want a little bit more shine. Too bad. Be careful not to go too far because then it starts to look like it's all wet. So right there looks pretty good for what I want this to be. And again, you just have to play with this invert to see if this is the look you're going for. Again, it's just inverting the map. And then uh, the specular map is going to be uh, basically we want this to be the metal map. So where it says specularity here at the end, we want to set this to metalness. And you can see that's just going nuts. And we need to put basically a mask in. So we're just going to take this metallic map, drop it into the thumbnail, and there it is. Now it's a little strong, so there's a little slider. So we can just dial that back to about 0.6 or so. It should give us a pretty good result. All right, a few other maps we can add in here is the occlusion map. So I'm just going to click this little triangle 
and activate it, say occlusion. And this, we're just going to drag this up. And there's an occlusion map and a cavity map. So what I'm going to do, there was an ambient occlusion map. I'm going to drop that right in there. And then if I go up a directory, if I go to my X normal, remember I ba baked out a couple maps from my X normal bake. There is an occlusion, so you could drop that in. There's also a cavity map. So I'm going to take this cavity map, left mouse click and drag it, and drop that in. And then you can kind of just turn it on and off. And it's just adding us just a little bit of shadows in those crevices. So, but you can always dial it down. There's some sliders that allow us to add the full capacity of that map onto our model. It's looking really good. I like it. Let's see what else. I think that's all the maps that we need to put in. Now the next part, we're going to start dialing in the environment, the lighting, and then saving it out for our final render.